so um, that's what they get when they come, you see. But, um, but what were you doing before the satire arrived? Were you sitting on a high no, chair? No, it was, it was these friends that said, you know, well, while you're waiting for death, dear, why don't you give a party? <laughs> and I thought there's nowhere to sit them, because I've got no chair, one chair for myself, I've got nothing else. And they said, well, buy a settee and have a party. So I did this casserole. I was told it was a very good thing to do. I live alone, you'll see. So I did this casserole. I was From rabbit. a book? Did you have a book? Yeah, Hugh Manning told me to do Rabbit Insider. It was awful. <laughs> they all said, oh, look, I've got some money. They said, oh, let's go out, you know. <laughs> I didn't want to know. I died the death, so I've never, never tried it since. Well, no, you, you live alone, and you're, and you're a private person, and, and you, which you've just said. You're also a very funny person. Does that mean you're on a lot of, of mailing lists for dinner parties? Do people, people ring you up and say, come round tonight and come round yes, tonight? Yes, I do get all that. Yes. I mean, do they think of you as a court jester? Well, I'm asked occasionally in that respect. I mean, it's put in, in, a, in a much more subtle way, of course. I beg you, know, say, you know, I'm sure we'll get a lot of love. You'll love it. We've got so and so coming and all that rubbish, you know. <laughs> but I, I still care of it. I still care of it mostly. I do. I, I'm not a gregarious person by nature. I really do like being alone. And I find, anyway, that relationships are such an appalling intrusion on privacy. You see, the falling in love is, is a terrible sort of loss of privacy, isn't it? Have you fallen in love ever? No, no. I, <laughs> I don't think it's possible for someone like me. I'm a complete egotist, you see. And I'm, I, my world revolves about myself. First thing in the morning, I look in the mirror and think, oh, <laughs> all that, you know, what a dish, I think, all that, you know. This wonderful figure, I mean, you know, and this hair, spun gold, it's been described. I've been described, as you know, a head of spun gold. I hope, hope they're getting it in colour. <laughs> and um, I love all that aspect of myself, you know, and I spend hours looking at the body and thinking, all this beauty, you know, and I wouldn't want to share it. You, know, <laughs> Listen, well, you must have actually stashed away quite a lot of money. I mean, you're always in work. You're no, all... not at all. Not, I'm not stashed away. Anything. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You work a lot, you're very popular. Yes. You're you're, all, you're on radio, on television. I mean, you delight us all. You're on the stage, you're in films and things. Do you have a... <laughs> it's all true. What he says is right, you know. Yeah, he's quite right. He's done all that research. You get all that done for you by that Well, stuff. I see you. I keep my eyes and ears yes. open. I mean, I know. Yes. Do you have a big sock under your bed? No, no, no. I, no, I do. I, I put it into a building society for a rainy day, of course. Because I've got to think of my mother. I keep my mother. And I've got a sister who's dependent on me, you see. I've got to look after them, haven't I? So I've got to put my money in something safe. No good, all that stuff. I mean, you don't live in down. great opulence, obviously. Oh, no, no, I've got two rooms, kitchen and bathroom. I put the arpic down and run. <laughs> <laughs> well, the smell, the smell is atrocious, isn't it? It's appalling. And I do the odd bit of, le not low dusting, I don't, I don't bend. Because, <laughs> you know, you know, I've had a lot of trouble with the spine. I really have. I've been on more traction beds than you've had hot dinners. <laughs> Things they've done to me. It's but you dreadful. rush around with the dust. Effect. I rush around the odd, on the odd occasion and sort of blow everything. <laughs> you know, and clean it all up and do that. Every now and again, I have a great spring clean. But otherwise, I don't do it regularly. My mother uh, keeps her flat, you know, in, in pin pie order, but she does it regularly. Does she bottom through a lot? Oh, my goodness. You've got that expression, bottom through. Mm. What, where's that come from? It comes from up the north. Is it? Yeah. Bottom through? You heard that, bottom through? Yeah. See, they, they, they have heard that. Well, they're all dumb, that lot. Now, my that. mother... <laughs> My mother's great expression is, I've got a wire in. She, oh, oh, I've got a wire in this morning. Because if she's like, wire in, which comes from some uh, rural practice where they wired in at the end of the other sheep uh, and counted them. But it does what does it mean? It means get yourself It together. means get, get, get organised, get the whole thing done, yes. Yeah. Well, so you don't spend any of your money, apart from looking after your family, which is admirable, on, you don't spend it on, say, buying pictures or buying a, a rare piece of furniture or some indulgent luxury that you could put your finger on? No, I think it's all rubbish. No, I've got very few possessions. I've got the gramophone and my leader. I like playing my leader. And I've got the books, you'll see. You'd, uh, ma you'd make a very good monk, wouldn't you? Yes, that would appeal to me very much. But I went to Topolu Monastery when I was in Crete because Beverly Cross said to me, we've got to go to this monastery. It's where Makario served his novitiate. And we arrived there and this drawbridge was lowered. And this monk in a chimney pot at Greek, or Greek Orthodox Church, you see, was on the battlements with a feathered aster. And I thought, well, you're... <laughs> I thought, well, you're wasting, I'm wasting your time, girl, because all the wind, the wind was blowing it straight back, you know. I thought, wasting the time. <laughs> but he came down off the battlements and I said, we are from England, you understand. He <laughs> oh. you you said, you want to see the mosaics? And I said, yes, we've heard a lot about them. They were very, very, very beautiful, beautiful Byzantine mosaics. And they show the disciples washing the feet of Christ. They were beautiful. 
And we were standing looking at them, and he was explaining how they got all the old whitewash that the Turks had smothered, all, smothered them over with. And uh, I was getting quite interested. And when we left, I said to Beverly, you didn't appear to be at all interested in what that monk was saying about those mosaics. He was a charming old boy. And you kept backing away. And he said, well, I saw the lice in the beard. <laughs> and of course, you see, they were all, so it was all jumping, these lice. So I said, well, I felt awful for the rest of the journey. <laughs> I couldn't stop itching the whole time I was in Crete. But you'd be a very clean monk if you were a monk. Oh, and I would. There would, be, mm. there would be no jelly under your soap. There'd be no the jelly mosaics. and there'd, there'd be no dust and, either. And I'd like you sometime to show me around your mosaics. Kenneth Williams, thank you very much. <laughs>